I invite you to join with me in the call to worship. I will sing it through once. I invite you to sing it through with me the second time. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living Word. Jesus, Welcome into worship today. It's good that you all have joined us. I'm very thankful that we can still connect uh, in this way and having worship uh, this way. This worship video is for Sunday, January 17th, the second Sunday after Epiphany. A couple of brief announcements to share. One, uh, the Church Council met uh, this last week and has decided to continue offering online worship services for the foreseeable future. We do not yet have a date for when we may resume in-person worship. We know that uh, different regions of Illinois are uh, adjusting their mitigation levels, including the region we live in, um, but a lot of the same uh, restrictions about gatherings inside of spaces uh, remain the same. Uh, between uh, the different levels of mitigations uh, that we were under and will be under. So at this time, it is uh, safer for us to continue uh, having uh, online worship only. More information about that will be available in our upcoming uh, newsletters, and when the Council reevaluates that and decides to resume in-person worship, we will share that information with the congregation as soon as it's available. The second announcement today pertains to our annual meeting. We will be having our annual meeting still this month on January 31st, but it will not be an in-person uh, exclusive meeting. We are going to have this meeting by Zoom. Our council president, Rose, is uh, preparing a letter that will be mailed out to the congregation. It will talk about how we gather on Zoom as a congregation. It will also uh, share that we will have a practice opportunity for Zoom on Sunday, January 24th at 9 a.m. Uh, that invite will go out as well. That will be an opportunity for people to, who've not used Zoom before to log in and, and to see how Zoom works. Uh, if you have uh, used Zoom, that would be an opportunity for you to click on also uh, because that way we get to see what it might look like with uh, 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 people uh, on Zoom at once. And we, as the leaders, can learn how to navigate the screens properly, make sure we can figure out how to uh, record who's present and everything. So it's very important, whether you've used Zoom or not, that you log in on the 24th to help us prepare for the 31st when we have our actual meeting. The meeting will be at 9 a.m. on the 31st by Zoom, like I said. We will share discussion at that time. We will have feedback from you watching at home or those of you who call in on your phones. And then for voting, we will have a specified time period for you to drive to the church, to our back parking lot here. At one door, you will pick up a ballot and your name will be listed as having participated in the meeting. And then you will pull forward you can mark off your ballot and hand it to someone else who will put it in a folder, and then those ballots will be counted once the time is up. All that information will be explained in the letter that Rose sends out. It will also be in uh, upcoming newsletters. If you have any questions whatsoever about how to participate in our annual meeting, call the office. Call me, call Rose, uh, or any of the council members. Uh, we will get you your answers. If you want to know how to participate in voting and aren't sure 
That also will be explained in the letter, but again, you may call myself, you may call Rose uh, Sandstrom and uh, get the answers that you need so that you can feel included and participate effectively with our congregation's work. I know that's a lot of announcement time here this morning, but those are two major things that I wanted to share verbally with you all, uh, as well as what will come out in our print resources. So uh, again, uh, I look forward to sharing this worship service with you, and let's prepare now to worship with our prelude music. you to join with me now in the confession and forgiveness, the words of confession that we share together I will uh, put on the screen as a subtitles so that you may uh, participate in this time. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace? Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. 
In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and spirit-reconciling power. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, for our homes where we gather to worship, and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. For our hymn of praise, I invite you to join with me as we sing, Come All You People, which is hymn number 819 in our red hymnals. Come all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come all you people, come and praise the Most High. Come now and worship the Lord. Come all you people, come and praise the sweet Savior. Come all you people, come and praise the Savior. Come all you people, come and praise the Savior. Come now and worship the Lord. Come all you people, come and praise the Spirit. Come all you people, come and praise the Spirit. Come all you people, come and praise the Spirit. Come now and worship the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, still the chaotic voices around us, that we may be better able to hear the voice of God calling our name. Let that one clear voice give us purpose and send us as a reflection of God's glory for all to come and see the Lord Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please do take the time to greet one another around you with a sign of peace. And don't limit yourself to those in your household. Find ways of sharing God's peace with your friends and family who are near and far. Our first reading today comes from 1 Samuel, the third chapter. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. 
The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of, the, of God was, was placed. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, lie down again. So Samuel went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. So the Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from the beginning to the end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then Eli said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Samuel grew up. The Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is uh, verses from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance, in your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them, and they are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the sixth chapter. 
All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for the food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said the two shall become one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own, for you were bought with a price? Therefore, glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I, saw that because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. One of the questions that I get asked a lot, and this uh, is a question that I've been asked throughout my ministry. It's not something just recent, but it's something I get asked quite a lot. It is, Pastor, how do we get more people come to church? It's actually a fairly important question in the sense that uh, it acknowledges that we know that something important takes place here. And it also acknowledges that we want more people to experience what takes place here. So it is a very important question. And as I said, it's a question that's been asked uh, for a very long time. I've been an ordained minister for 18 and a half years, uh, but the question predates my being in ordained ministry. Uh, it's a question that churches have asked for generations. How do we get more people to come and be a part of what happens here? It becomes a very fascinating question in light of a pandemic. It's a fascinating question because we can't come and gather here in the worship space. So how do we say to somebody, come and see? The challenge is 
Where? Where do they come to? The second challenge is what are they seeing? This question, come and see, or how do we get come, people to come and see, is based on this story here in uh, John's Gospel. One of the first stories of evangelism, if you will, in John's Gospel. Jesus goes and finds Philip and says, hey, Philip, follow me. And he does. And because of the narration, uh, this is probably a condensed story. So Philip begins having experiences with Jesus as they travel, as he listens to him teach, as he sees some of the miracles he's performing. And then as they arrive in Bethsaida, he knows from his own experiences what his encounter with Jesus does. So he goes to his friend Nathaniel. Hey, Nathaniel. Guess what? We found the one we've been waiting for. That conversation is probably based on the two of them growing up together in a synagogue together, hearing the word of God together, hearing rabbis and others talk about a day when God would send a redeemer. They have great anticipation of what that might be and what they're looking for for that person. And now Philip is certain that he has found him. And Philip says, hey, I found him. He's from Nazareth. At which point, Nathaniel has a little dig at Nazareth, right? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You know, we're familiar with that kind of geographical dig. They're, they're, every one of us has a place in our brain of where that might be. That if we expected someone important to arrive, we think we know what the place is that that somewhere important would be. You would expect someone important to be from big, important cities. Which is why it always strikes me as humorous uh, that Ronald Reagan uh, was born in an itty-bitty, tiny little town not far from here in Illinois. I've been to that town. I've been to the spot that is marked as his birthplace. It's a little apartment above a storefront. You go and stand in front of that spot and tell me you think something good is going to come out of that in terms of a national politician someday. That's the kind of dig that Nathaniel has at Nazareth. Yeah, nothing important is coming out of that place. Standing there, yeah, no, no way there's going to be a Messiah coming from here. It should be from Jerusalem or any number of important cities in Israel's past. Not Nazareth. Philip says to him, no, 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 come. You, you got to see this. You got to experience it firsthand. And Nathaniel approaches Jesus, and in his approach to Jesus, Jesus knows Nathaniel. Jesus names Nathaniel and his character. We don't know this scene that took place under the fig tree. Jesus knows it. Nathaniel knows it. That's all that matters because when Jesus says it, Nathaniel can't understand how anybody would have seen it, let alone some guy he's never met before. And he recognizes the only way that he would know what took place underneath that fig tree is that he must be, indeed, the Messiah. And so he begins his journey following Jesus. Come and see, Philip says. Come and see. We wonder how do we say to people around us, come and see. One of the pre-pandemic uh, struggles that we face with come and see is we tend to think that as church we have hired experts who do the work of evangelism. And so we defer our giftedness of saying, come and see, to those experts, to the paid professionals. We let them do the work. And then we wonder why it's not happening. Or we wonder why it's coming up short. Or we wonder why people aren't responding. I want to take a, a brief moment here and point out that it was 
Yes, Jesus, who started by saying to Philip, come and follow me. But then it was Philip who said, come and see. It wasn't Jesus. Jesus didn't have a growth model in mind. Jesus had a relationship model in mind. He modeled a relationship with Philip, and Philip modeled that relationship with Nathaniel. So one of the first things we need to remember when we think of come and see is it's not a hired expert task. It's not a job description for someone else. To begin to find the answer to come and see, we have to follow the relationship model. The relationship model begins with us knowing why we responded to Jesus when Jesus said to us, follow me. We need to be able to say, I have experienced the fullness of God's grace and forgiveness. We need to be able to say, I have tasted the goodness of the Lord. We have to be able to say, I have experienced the relief that comes from trusting God in times of anxiety and uncertainty. We need to be able to say, in those times I haven't experienced the relief that I seek, I still know God is standing with me, that Jesus is my Lord and Savior and has victory for me over the circumstances that at the moment are overbearing. If we're going to answer the question, how do we get more people to come, we start there with our own relationship with Jesus. Because when we go out in the neighborhoods, when we sit at tea or coffee with our neighbors, when we resume having Sunday lunch with our friends at the restaurant, and we want to say, come and see, they're going to say, what am I coming to see? It starts with our building their relationship by saying what we have seen. Now, there's a couple things that we see when we come to church. One aspect of coming and seeing is there's, there's a certain mysticism about this faith. The mysticism of the faith is found in the symbols that we have in our sanctuary that lift us up to the transcendent God. The mysticism is in the rituals, it's in the prayers that we repeat, it is in the songs that we sing over and over again, it's, the mysticism is in the clasped hands as we lift ourselves as incense to God in prayer. The mysticism is in knowing that God is has sent his son Jesus to be our Lord and Savior and that we have that individual connection to God. There are some people for whom that's what they are wanting to see and experience. Another aspect of what we see and experience is the social justice side. That is, that faith connects us to the world in a greater meaningful way that we have heard the call for justice and we say this faith is not just about us being in a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, but it is about God leading us in a broader relationship with our neighbors so that our neighbors experience love and equality and justice and, and are liberated from oppression and that their gifts and talents are utilized in the world around us. Some people uh, see that side of faith and want that experience. And uh, if they don't see that side of faith, they're not going to understand the relationship. Just like some people want to see the mysticism. And if they don't see that, they're not going to understand what this faith is all about. So that brings it back to you and me as individuals and as community. What do we see when we come? 
what is the relationship that we experience with Jesus? I'm not lifting one aspect up over the other. They're both equal. And for some people, again, you're more drawn to mysticism. Some people are more drawn to social justice. Some find a unique equilibrium and balance the two together well. Some have other aspects of faith that I haven't mentioned. But those are just the two over uh, primary aspects. What do you see? What is your relationship with Jesus based on? Because if we're going to go back to that first question, uh, how do we get more people to come and see, we need to know what we're pointing them out to see. What are we showing them? If we're showing them that our faith is dead, that the rituals are meaningless, that the social justice is meaningless, if they see our faith is dead, well, they're not going to come. They're not going to experience anything new. But if they come and see that this offers us life, if they come and see that the rituals and the symbols and the, the, the mysticism brings new life to us, if they see our works in loving our neighbors brings life to us and to our neighbors, then they're going to experience something. Then they're going to want to experience more. And in the midst of them coming and and experiencing the rituals, God is going to call out to them and say, you are my beloved child. And they may respond, well, how do you know I am a beloved child? And at that point, Jesus will reach down with his hand and say, because I'm here for you. And they will have their Nathaniel moment. Maybe they'll come because they see us serving our neighbors, because they know we sponsor the open table, or because they know we are involved with community days, or because they've seen us offer meals to people, uh, or maybe something brand new that we haven't thought of yet. And they see we making a difference that is drawing life. And in that experience where they see us bringing new life to others, they will stand there and have their Nathaniel moment by saying, God, where have you been all this time when I, this is where I could have been getting life? And Jesus will come down with his open hand and say, my beloved, I've been here all along. And they will see. We do need to break ourselves from the cycle of growth model ministry. We're not here to make sure that every week we have every one of these pews filled. We're not here to get the most views on my YouTube channel. We are here to grow in our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. We are here to offer others the opportunity to experience the newness of life that Jesus Christ brings to them. What do you come? What do you come for? What do you see when you do come? Now instead of asking, how do we get more people to come and see? Ask yourself, how do I share this relationship with God with others? How do I see that someone else experiences the newness of life that only Jesus offers through a wonderful relationship that we have? That is the question we have to move towards. Yes, pandemic offers new challenges for that. But our church ministry remains active. We continue to proclaim a living God. We proclaim to offer new life in Christ. We just need to say, come and see. Experience what we do. Amen.
come and seen the new life that Jesus offers to us, we confess our faith now using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This week, our Living the Creed uh, PDF will help us answer some of those questions that were lifted up in the sermon. What do we come and experience when we see Jesus? Not only as an individual, but also in the church. There's spaces there for you to fill in your own answers. And many of us may have very different answers for what we experience individually with God or what we see the church experiences. So it's an opportunity for you to share that with your family. Maybe it'll be one of the few times you've actually talked about that with family, what you experience when you see Jesus and what you experience about Jesus at church. But also, I want to encourage you to use this time to learn some new ways of sharing what happens at church. You know, we have a Facebook page. We have been posting these YouTube videos. You have an opportunity, if you're on social media, to share these links, to say to others, hey, come and see. This is what our church is doing right now. Come and see the way that we proclaim and live out the Word of God. So that's an opportunity. You're not offending the friends by posting a church video on your Facebook page or your Twitter account or your other social media things. Those who want to ignore it will. Those who will find it will find it and will experience Jesus through it. So take that opportunity to share an experience that you have with church through your social media with other friends. And do enjoy this week's uh, PDF, uh, Living the Creed PDF. I also want to offer an opportunity to give thanks, uh, Thanksgiving for the Word. This will uh, have uh, responses of we give you thanks and praise. So be prepared to offer those responses as we go. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, Holy God. For by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join with me as we lift our prayers to God. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world, and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Let us pray. 
Have mercy, O God. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of the earth, our home. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, for leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound. We especially pray for Bradley, Josie, Bev, Nancy, John, Linda, Dave, Jim, Brad and Jody, Cassie and family, Dolores, Graham, Bob, Isla, Norman, Evelyn, Daryl, Donna, Becky, Joy, Pat, Diane, Anna, Kim, Matthew, Rose, Kathy, and Craig. For all who are in our hearts and on our minds, that God console all who suffer, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our community, for visitors joining us for the first time here on our YouTube channel, or those returning again, and for those who are absent from our assembly today, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our nation, preparing for the transition of leadership in our executive branch, that in the days ahead, our nation may experience safety and peace, that those who choose to protest may have their voice heard, that those who wish to bring out violence may be quelled in their desires, and that the inauguration of a new president may go without incident. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now for our gifts received by mail and electronically, we give our thanks. O God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms wide open. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with the same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen.
benediction. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.